Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Visitors, released in the year 1993. During a war between France and England in 1123, Godfroy, the Count of Apremont and Papincourt, known as the Hardy, saves King Louis VI by killing an English soldier chasing them through the forest. After returning to their camp, as a reward for his bravery, the king gives him the title of Montmorel and gives him permission to marry his beloved Frenigod, the daughter of the Duke of Puglia. After showing his gratitude to the king for this gesture, Godfroy departs the camp with his servant Jacoil and his men. While crossing the forest, the men come across an abandoned hut where they see a group of people performing a strange ritual. Godfroy orders his soldiers to raid the hut and arrest the witch leading the rituals to be burned for heresy. On arriving outside the castle, Godfroy orders his men to announce his arrival while he gets himself ready to meet his newly betrothed. After hearing the announcement, Frenigod rushes to meet him while her father follows to try and stop her from marrying an ordinary count. Meanwhile, the captured witch drugs his drink, causing him to hallucinate. As a result, he mistakes the duke for a giant bear chasing his future bride and kills him with a crossbow. Sometime later, at the duke's funeral, Frenigod pledges to remain true to her father's wishes and refuses to marry Godfroy. As everyone leaves the chapel, his servant steals the duke's jewels from his corpse and hides them in a statue before joining his master. Deeply regretting his actions, Godfroy meets with an old wizard, Eusebius, asking for his help. Eusebius tells him he cannot bring the duke back from the dead, but can send Godfroy back in time to change the course of his arrow and stop it from killing the duke in the first place. Agreeing to his suggestion, the wizard gives him and his servant a magic potion while he casts his spell to send them back in time. When the two men disappear, the wizard realizes his mistake by sending them to the future instead of the past. We next see the men waking up in the forest, but soon realize that the wizard misled them because they are not in the same place the duke had been killed. Although confused, Godfroy sends his men to fetch a horse so they can return to the castle. His servant does spot a horse nearby, but is surprised to also see a pathway made of rock that he has never seen before. Suddenly, a car drives toward him, and the servant barely manages to get out of the way. A postman steps out of the car, but the servant thinks this man is a moor in the devil's chariot and rushes back to Godfroy to warn him about it. After smashing the car to get rid of it, Godfroy prays to God for forgiveness as he believes this is all happening as a punishment for his sins. He then gets on the horse to continue their journey back to the castle, but are shocked to find a modern village instead. While stealing some steak from a roadside restaurant, they come across a homeless woman named Jeanette, who thinks they are TV stars due to their costumes, and asks them to get her an audition. As the two argue with this woman, the restaurant manager berates them for stealing and the two are separated during their escape. As Godfroy is frightened by these new and unusual surroundings, he rushes to a nearby church, calling out for sanctuary. The priest of the church, Haver, meets with him before calling Beatrice, a woman who looks exactly like Frenigod, to hear this man's claims to be the Count. Meanwhile, Godfroy is overcome with terror after noticing a nearby calendar shows it's the year 1992 and he understands he has traveled 1,000 years into the future. When Beatrice arrives at the church, due to her striking resemblance, Godfroy thinks it is his Frenigod. But when she does not recognize him, he realizes she is not his beloved but in fact her descendant. Godfroy tries to explain, but Beatrice does not understand and calls the National Guard. Meanwhile, the servant becomes friendly with Jeanette after she takes him to her van to offer him some food. There, he mentions that his lord is the Count and she agrees to take him to the Count's daughter's house. Back at the church, Major Gibbon arrives with a psychiatrist named Dr. Bovin. They then try to talk with him about what has happened, but Godfroy is offended by their behavior and attacks the doctor. As a result, the entire force surrounds him and carries him off to the psychiatric hospital. Later, Beatrice meets with her husband, Jean-Pierre, and tells him she thinks Godfroy might be her distant cousin, Hubert, who had disappeared a while before. 
They also find the picture of Godfroy in the family album, which she claims has a great resemblance with Hubert. To prove her point, she calls Jacquard, the owner of the royal castle, which is now a hotel, and asks him to send a picture of the family portrait so they can see if there really is a resemblance. But Jacquard, being too busy at that time, apologizes that he cannot. Meanwhile, Jeanette has brought the servant to Beatrice's house too, where she is surprised with his resemblance with Jacquard, who we later find out to be his descendant. Upon seeing Beatrice, the servant addresses her as Frenigod as well, his mistress. Although confused by his attitude, Beatrice realizes he is talking about Godfroy and takes him to the hospital to rejoin his sire. At the hospital, while meeting with the doctors, Beatrice tells them she thinks he must be her cousin Hubert, who has developed amnesia after an accident, and asks them to release him to her custody. Despite Jean's objections, Beatrice takes the two men back home with her. The servant once again addresses her as Frenigod, but Godfroy explains to him that she is not the daughter of the Duke, but his descendant instead. Godfroy tells him they must find the dungeon where the wizard is being kept and find his potions or spellbook so they can return home. After returning back to the house, Godfroy asks Beatrice about their castle. She reveals the family had abandoned it centuries before, but promised to take him to see it the next day. At her house, Godfroy and the servant find it hard to adjust to their surroundings, and when Jean-Pierre asks them to wash their hands before dinner, they do so in the toilet. Beatrice then tries to teach them about the sink, but they leave the tap open after they finish as they don't understand how it works. Then, seeing a picture of the castle, Godfroy asks her about some of the structures which were there in the past and asks about the dungeon. Beatrice reveals the castle was rebuilt after the revolution and although her father searched for the dungeon, he never found it. Over dinner, Beatrice reveals the castle is now owned by Jacquard. This upsets Godfroy who thinks it is wrong for the castle to rest in the hands of peasants and declares his intention to win it back. After dinner, as the family tries to clean up the sink mess, Jacquard arrives with a few members of the delegation. Despite everyone being surprised by his resemblance to the servant, both claim they don't see it. However, Godfroy realizes he must be the descendant of his servant and gives him some old coins as a down payment for the castle, but Jacquard refuses and leaves. As both men continue to make a mess around the house, Jean quickly becomes fed up with their presence, but Beatrice remains lenient towards them. Beatrice takes this time to talk about their family history, revealing the kingdom does not exist anymore. While talking, Beatrice spots the family seal on his finger and suspects he must have stolen it from the castle. The next morning, Beatrice drives Godfroy to the castle to return the ring to Jacquard. Godfroy still claims the ring belongs to him, but she scolds him for making things up and clarifies that her father sold the ring to Jacquard along with the castle. However, as the two approach the castle, the weather becomes stormy and the ring starts to sizzle and catch fire. As they arrive outside the castle, the two versions of the same ring collide with each other and cause an explosion that destroys Jacquard's Range Rover. When everything settles down, Godfroy spots the ring in the car and orders his servant to accompany him to his chamber. Upon entering the room, Godfroy opens the door to his secret dungeon and both step inside. Coming back to the room to find a torch, Godfroy tries to tell Beatrice the truth, but she still does not believe him. So Godfroy takes her down to the dungeon to prove he's telling the truth, while his servant brings Jeanette into the hotel. After the pair are thrown out for their disheveled appearance, the servant takes her back to the chapel to retrieve the Duke's jewels that he had hidden there a thousand years before. Back in the dungeon, Godfroy tells Beatrice they used to keep their enemies down here. He then spots the wizard's spellbook, but is disappointed to see it had been completely destroyed. But Beatrice finds a note with the address of the wizard's descendant, Mr. Ferdinand. So she decides to take Godfroy to the address where they meet with Ferdinand, who reveals he was charged with helping him to go back to his own time. 
He gives Godfrey the potion and advises him he must go back tonight, otherwise he will have to wait another 33 years. But by then, another future will have formed in which he has no descendants because he did not marry Frenigod. Beatrice and Godfrey then rush back to the castle, but learn the servant is not there. As they search for him, the servant calls the castle and tells him he is at a bowling alley enjoying his time with Jeanette. Godfrey tells him he has found a way to go back, but it has to be tonight. The servant, however, does not want to go back, as he likes his new life. But Godfrey threatens him with death, which forces him to comply. Back at the castle, Major Gibbon arrives to arrest him again, thinking his potion is a drug. But Godfrey tricks them and locks him and Jacquard in the dungeon. When the servant arrives, Godfrey takes them into his chamber, where he tells Beatrice he is happy to have met his descendant. However, while Godfrey is distracted, his servant sneaks down into the dungeon and swaps jackets with Jacquard, causing Godfrey to mistake the two men and give the potion to the wrong man. They travel back in time to just before Godfrey entered the forest. This time, he successfully changes the course of the arrow to kill the witch instead and save the duke. Godfrey, thinking Jacquard is his servant, orders him to fetch some water. In the end, Godfrey and Frenigod ride together back to the castle, while Jacquard finds himself stranded in this strange new world. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care.